on the road again and this was not entirely on the plan but I think we're gonna do the Pacific Coast Highway all the way to Oregon. <laughs> We did a very similar trip back in 2012 along this stunning road from Los Angeles to San Francisco in the early days before we had our own home on wheels. I thought it would be a good idea to do it again. It is, in my opinion, one of the most beautiful drives in the world. I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV. My Wherever I want to be Cause I'm free in my RV yeah. We're going to take State Route 46 towards Cambria and there we're going to join the one Living wine country and we only got to go to one winery but hey, the show must go on it is, the ocean. The Pacific Coast Highway wasn't originally our first choice this time around. We do have a reservation in Coos Bay, Oregon, so we have to be there in about five days for the third and last of our three sponsored stays with Sun Outdoors. But I wanted to take a different route. The original plan was to take I-5 through the San Joaquin Valley, Sacramento, Mount Shasta, and then work our way to the coast. I mean, we've never taken that route. Another plan was to take the 395, the Eastern Sierra Scenic Byway up to Lake Tahoe, but it was more of a detour, so we decided to do the Pacific Coast Highway. Kind of last minute, commemorating the 10th anniversary of our 2012 trip, and I'm glad we made that decision. When we came in 2012, we were able to stop at many places along the way. Now the one disadvantage of doing this kind of trip with a travel trailer is that you're not gonna fit everywhere. Some of the parking lots along this route are tight, and there's one state park we're not gonna be able to see at all. We also wanted to park here in Cambria, see the town, and that is also not gonna happen. Well, it is official. Minitini 3 has now been to the Atlantic, the Gulf of Mexico, and now the Pacific. The only North American body of salt water missing is the Arctic, but I think we're going to save that one for Minitini 4. Let's take a break. I think they're cracking down on all these uh, spots where people used to be able to, to boondock, like a quick overnight. You know, and uh, I don't know how much they are enforcing it. We really do not have a, a anywhere to stay today, so <laughs> at some point we might I e either have to risk it and stay at one of these places or or look for a last minute. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what we're gonna do. But uh, here we are. This, it, actually, it's a pretty nice uh, stop. You know, it's, it's uh, compared to, to the views we're about to experience uh, farther north. This is. Um, I mean, not that great, but it is great. Look at that. But I just wanted to show you Mini 3 For the first time in the Pacific Ocean. We made it, it made it to the Pacific. Um, Starship made it to the Pacific a couple of days ago at, uh, at Pismo Beach, but, man, this is beautiful. And the weather is perfect for boondocking. It's probably, the thermometer said 70, but it feels like 60s and it's kind of windy, so it's perfect for boondocking here. All right, let's continue on the way north. It's gonna be soup with a view. I'm going to stop for a moment here because this is one of the spots from where you can get a view of Hertz Castle. One of these days we're gonna visit it, but I hear you have to commit like half a day to it. So yeah, as I say, next time. Even though this may not be the prettiest part, 
it is still stunning. It is very windy, so there's a lot of salt in the air, which is getting stuck on the front camera lens, that's why we're getting a somewhat diffused image. I'll try to compensate. Let's take another break. We can still see Hertz Castle from here, and more views of the ocean. A lone pelican. And that would be the Piedras Blancas light station. Here's our next point of interest, the Elephant Seal Vista Point. This is one of those obligatory stops along the Pacific Coast Highway. Look at them all, sunbathing at the beach. It is so windy today. Actually, the pelicans are almost putting on a better show than the elephant seals, which are kind of chill today. Always fun to stop and see the elephant seals, you know, doing their thing. And I could stay here for hours, but unfortunately our time is kind of limited today. So uh, we've got to continue north. There's a trail that goes all the way to the lighthouse, but there's no oversized parking, or time for that matter, so another time perhaps. Now it's getting interesting. There's a restaurant with a view, probably, but we couldn't have stopped with the trailer anyway. Yep. It is quite the roller coaster ride. This extremely picturesque area is called Big Sur.
I remember that rock from our 2012 trip. So let's stop for a few minutes. I kind of wish I could stop at every pullout, but a lot of them are too small for us, or we're too big for them, and on the wrong side of the road. At some point, we should do this the other way, southbound. Now crossing Limekiln Creek and Limekiln State Park. It seems very nice. I can see Big Creek Bridge in the distance. Big Creek Bridge, not as famous or iconic as Bigsby Creek Bridge coming later, but it is still a good photo opportunity. In fact, let me see if I can stop at the Vista Point. Not an easy task with the trailer in tow. Well, there it is. Oh, here's an even better view. Another quick stop as we're getting close to Macway Falls. Right Macway Falls is somewhere down there, we just have to find it. Meanwhile, that's not a bad view. Not bad at all. This is the entrance to Julia Pfeiffer Burn State Park, from where you can hike to the falls, but trailers and RVs are not permitted, and it looks like the parking area for the viewpoint is closed. Tell you what, we've come way too far not to see the falls, so I'm gonna park right here. be somewhere down there. There it is! Well, there it is, Macway Falls. This was almost bucket list, let me tell you. 
uh, because the last time I was here, uh, back in 2011 or 2012, I can't recall exactly. I didn't know exactly uh, about, about Macway Falls, and I took a lot of pictures with Macway Rocks, which we're gonna see now. But um, yeah, that's a, it's a waterfall that goes straight into the ocean, which is very rare. Uh, this is all part of Julia Pfeiffer Burns uh, State Park. But they don't allow, they have a big sign, no RVs, no trailers of any kind. Whew. So um, I just parked in one of the pullouts and walked to this. This is the official pullout to see Macquarie Falls. I don't know why they have it uh, cordoned off so you cannot do it. So maybe a lot of people were congregating here. In fact, I had to wait uh, for some folks to take some pictures there. And this is the other amazing view. Look at this. Actually, we're gonna zoom in on those rocks now, but this is a, this is the, the California, the Pacific coast at its best. Now we'll continue down the road. Here's the Macway Rocks Vista Point, but I don't think there's any room for us. Luckily, I was able to film it in 2012. This is the town called Big Sur. Somewhere on that rock is the Point Sur Lighthouse. We keep going and going. Another beautiful vista past every curve. And this is pretty remote. More than you would guess, it being California the most populous state. Coming up, what is arguably the most famous bridge of all this section of the road. It's being featured in postcards, movies, and even Grand Theft Auto V. It is none other than Bixby Creek Bridge. Let's see if we can stop. resident. Hello there. They've got a view here. It is said to be one of the most photographed bridges in California. When we did this trip in 2012, a lot of people scolded me for not stopping at Santa Cruz. There was just not enough time, and I decided to visit the Monterey Bay Aquarium instead, because, of course, the Sausalito Cetacean Institute. So today, we're gonna skip Monterey, and we're going to visit Santa Cruz instead. Mm -hmm. 
now arriving in Monterey, which was California's capital during the Spanish and Mexican rule. We're just gonna stay at the KOA, very expensive for just an overnight, but hear me out. It was the quickest and easiest to book, last minute, even though the idea was to boondock somewhere actually, but we really want to unhitch and see a little bit of Santa Cruz with the little time we have left. We don't have very ambitious plans, we're just gonna get something to eat and see the highlights, mainly the area around the wharf and the boardwalk. We definitely ought to spend more time here in the future. The boardwalk seems to be mainly a daytime thing, so I don't think it is going to be very lively at this time of the day, so we're going to do the wharf. It is one of those somewhat complex roundabouts. Whatever happened to four-way stops? A dollar per 20 minutes, that's actually not that bad considering where we are. That's the boardwalk, dating back to 1907, it is California's oldest surviving amusement park. Ooh, street musician, cool! There are plenty of places to eat, so let's see if we can find something that piques our interest, and parking for that matter. Oh, there's plenty of parking back here. It is Wednesday, so it is not very busy. Might as well go all the way to the end. These types of boardwalks are much more common on the East Coast. It kind of reminds me of the Jersey Shore somehow. So many sailboats here on Monterey Bay. We're going to eat at the Dolphin. It's gotta be the touristy place, but it's got pretty good reviews. And even better views. That pigeon is going to have a feast on that sourdough. Here comes another one. <laughs> she went straight for it. Straight for the for the clam chowder. Now there's three of them. So we ordered some cava to start. We're in a celebratory mood. We got the clam chowder to this. That's what you do. There's a fish somewhere down there. It looks like it is going to be a beautiful sunset. And look what we have down there. These sea lions are everywhere on the west coast. There's the lighthouse. Also the Santa Cruz Surfing Museum. It is so peaceful. Yet, so much going on here on the bay. Yep. Who's making all that noise, I wonder? Let me tell you, that must be the good life. Just chilling. Enjoying the cool ocean breeze. There's the boardwalk once again. So let's drive around the area with the little daylight we have left. I just wish we had more time to explore.
We did some research and that area came up. It is called Cliff Drive. There's a walking and biking trail along the coast that if it was earlier, we would definitely do. I think today we're just gonna drive it. Oh yeah, I can see how this would be a nice walk. And we can see the wharf over there. Here we have a surfing monument. Okay, I gotta do it. Let's park for a couple of minutes. It was going to be a five days of boom docking has turned out to be at least for now three days of luxury uh, RVing but things uh, have to be done you know I, uh, I do need to do an oil change on the on Starship here it's first oil change so I want to go like a proper um, Chevy dealer and the one in Coos Bay doesn't have any any appointments until like in three weeks so the one in Paraluma has an appointment tomorrow, so that's where we're going. Yeah, sometimes you have to adapt. Flexibility, like joy, is the key. Sometimes you have to splurge in order to get things done. Santa Cruz wasn't really on the radar, not until now, but now it is. So maybe now we can plan a trip to the whole Monterey Bay area. You know, Monterey, Carmel by the Sea, Santa Cruz, Maybe I'll read some Steinbeck before then to get a better sense of the area. So many places, so little time. Anyway, we're going to Petaluma, California, the egg capital of the world, near the Napa Valley wine region. It is not too far, about a three-hour drive hugging the coast. First time I heard of the place was by listening to This Week in Tech podcast back in the mid-2000s as this was where the podcast was produced, and the host, Leo Laporte, often spoke about the town. 
It is also home to Lagunitas Brewing Company, one of the first IPAs I ever tried. We're once again getting close to the ocean. While not as stunning as the Big Sur area, this is not bad. Now, would that be the Pigeon Point Light Station? I think it is. And I like lighthouses. That marine layer is getting closer and closer to shore. I'm afraid in a few moments we're going to be engulfed in it. And we are. That spot right there on the left, I wanted to stop there. Let me see if I can make a U-turn. Alright, this is a spot I had marked here on my map and this seems to be the very spot where Nomadic Fanatic boondocked uh, a couple of years ago. I don't know if it is still allowed, but uh, it's a beautiful spot. I, I do believe there's a sign over there that probably says no, no camping. There's a European RV there, a European Class C, very similar to the one uh, we went with bike. It's a Sunlight, same brand, but ours didn't have the cab over and uh, just can't over, can't get over how beautiful this is. I mean, the marine layer is, is rolling in, so, so it's not sunny and blue anymore, but it is quite amazing. It's the sunlight, just like the one we rented in Finland. And uh, as I said, ours was more like a B plus. This one is a proper class C, but uh, well, the sign, all the sign says is unstable cliffs, stay back. Of course, not everybody hits the warning, but there it is. There are no signs saying no overnight camping here, so I'm assuming you could. Whatever you, all right, let's keep going towards a uh, half moon bay and San Francisco, but now we know that this may be a potential spot and it's pretty wide, especially over there. So, as long as they don't put up a sign, this is still a valid boondocking spot, I would think. Let me know what you think. And the fog is burning off, but my lens not so much. We're gonna have to do a little bit of city driving here as we're about to cross the city by the bay, San Francisco. Actually, crossing is a big word. We're going to skirt it on the west. We wouldn't want to tackle those steep streets San Francisco is so famous for with a trailer in tow. Although, come think of it, if we were to do Lombard Street with a trailer behind us, it could go viral, but it could go very wrong too. There is something unique about this city. Something about the architecture, the hills, its unique geographical location. It's got an unmistakable character. Now driving across Golden Gate Park, over 1,000 acres in size. If it wasn't for the dense fog, we could probably see the red towers of Golden Gate Bridge already. And 
There it is. One of the most iconic bridges in the United States and perhaps the most photographed in the world. At the time of its opening in 1937, it was both the longest and tallest suspension bridge in the world. From the bridge, of course, you get commanding views of San Francisco Bay, Alcatraz Island, downtown San Francisco, and beyond. On the other side, the Pacific. That's all we're going to see of San Francisco today. We'll be back, I promise. Oh yeah, we arrived here a couple hours ago actually at the Petaluma KOA. It's a holiday weekend, so this place is gonna be packed by tomorrow. It's Thursday today. But you know what's in Petaluma? Lagunitas Brewing Company and Twit. So let's go there. Well, guess where we are? This is Twit, this week in tech. And if you don't know, Leo Laporte, he was one of the first to do this online podcasting and video thing. So it's like a pilgrimage, you know, coming to Petaluma and stopping here. <laughs> Now let's go to the other pilgrimage. Lagunitas, of course, was one of the first IPAs I ever tried. If memory serves, I believe it was probably John C. Dvorak who recommended it in the aforementioned tweet This Week in Tech show many, many years ago. It is still one of my favorites. And that's a Winnebago. Well, cheers. We've got quesadillas and tacos. Well, that's it. We did our our trip to Lagunitas IPA. Got some, got a six pack for for tomorrow for the live stream uh, because today's Thursday, right? Yes, it is. And uh, and now we're just gonna go back and rest. Oh, look! Look at the color on those mountains back there. Greetings once again from downtown Petaluma. Brick house. Serendipity brought us to this place called Brewster's, which was great, actually. Great live music, great service, great brisket, actually. Best, probably the best brisket we've had since Texas. So, um, yeah. Petaluma, California. Peraluma, I must say, pretty cool town.
well stop by the supermarket to get some essentials mainly uh, wine and water and uh, we're in the middle of a heat wave here in California it's uh, 83 degrees in Petaluma which by their standards this is a heat, heat wave it's not so bad For, but uh, my only hope is that by the coast it's gonna be a couple of degrees cooler because now we're gonna be boondocking for two days in a row uh, anyway I'm gonna try to stop first stop here Bodega Bay and uh, I was here in 2920 was it 2019 yes but Ili has never been there so this is uh, an exciting part of the trip on the next one we're tackling the north coast also known as the redwood coast all the way to the Oregon border until then thank you so much for watching and see you on the road Riding in my RV